What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. Got some pretty exciting Aether Revolt spoilers for you today, if I say so myself. So let's go ahead and run into those. They're pretty cool. All right, the first thing I want to look at is the Planeswalker pack, Planeswalkers, that we got today. We saw both Tezzeret and Ajani, which is pretty good news. But we'll talk about these. I'm not really sure how good these actually are. And Wizards already has said that, like, these Planeswalker pack, Planeswalkers, are meant to be, like, bad planeswalkers so that kind of tells you all you need to know let me go ahead and show you tezzeret right here this is tezzeret master of metal right here he's six mana that's four generic um a blue and a black for a five loyalty planeswalker and he's got plus one reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order his negative three is target opponent loses life equal to the number of artifacts you control. And his negative eight is gain control of all artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. Okay, so all of the Planeswalkers we're going to look at today, all three of them, there's actually one in the main set that we got today too. All three of them cost six mana. And to be honest, all three of them could be a little bit better for six. But again, Wizards kind of wants these, these Planeswalker pack Planeswalkers to be underpowered a little bit. And I think they hit the mark with this one. His plus one is guaranteed card advantage. It'll always net you an artifact. I do like the idea of playing like an artifact in your deck. Bye, Ziggy. Um, but anyway, I like the idea of playing like one artifact in your deck, and then his plus one can just go and get it, no matter what it is. That's kind of a cool idea. Um, but aside from that, I do like the second ability. Negative three is an awful, that's a really high loyalty cost. But for negative three, you can deal a bunch of damage to your opponent, depending on what kind of deck you're playing. And this definitely looks like it could slot into like a budget blue-black summonings or just a blue-black artifact deck with like Contraband Kingpin. Don't get me wrong, I mean, the card looks... Like, it could go in that at, at the very, very top end of the curve, but I don't really know how much work it'll do, to be honest with you. It's just a lot of mana, and, you know, you have to have a good bit of setup for it. His ultimate is really good. I mean, I kind of like his ultimate, but even his ultimate, like, against control, will give you nothing. <laughs> so there's that. So I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of this Tezzeret. Hopefully we see one in the main set that's a little bit better than this. Although I will say, I do really like the art on this Tezzeret. If I had to pick, like, one thing I like the most about this card, it's definitely the art. He's looking really, really good. So there's at least that. Um, and again, I, like, I guess the plus one is pretty good. I guess. But aside from that, I'm just, I'm not seeing it. Here's the other Planeswalker from the Planeswalker packs. This is a Johnny Valiant Protector. It's a kitty. He's six mana. That's four, a green, and a white. For a four uh, loyalty Planeswalker with plus two. Put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature. Plus one, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And his minus 11, that's ridiculous, is put X plus one plus one counters on target creature where X is your life total. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Well, this is not great. Just like the Tezzeret, he really doesn't protect himself in any meaningful way so that's kind of a problem what i will say is that he's got two plus abilities that's pretty good you don't see that on planeswalker every day so you're always going to be ticking up his loyalty he's got a plus two ability that's kind of good usually so there's that i think i like it a little bit better than the tesseret i like the plus one on him you know i like it a lot more than going and getting whatever artifact you hit first i like i like going and getting whatever creature you hit first especially in mid-range decks that seems like it's probably good so there's that um his ultimate is kind of nice but they can just like murder the creature at instant speed there's that and you know it only hits the one creature you have to have a creature out it's minus 11 so like the ultimate is not game winning <laughs> like i really i really don't think it's as game winning as it's supposed to look like it is you know and again neither one of these planeswalker pack planeswalkers protect themselves in any meaningful way and that is a serious problem neither one of them make tokens or anything like that um but the card advantage is real so there's that you know i just you know, I don't, we're probably not supposed to focus on these too much, but it'd be nice if, you know, obviously Wizards has said that they're trying to balance these to where they're not strictly competitive, you know, they're not going to be at the top tier of standard. But let me just say that you could probably make them slightly better without the fear of them breaking standard. Let me just go with that. But we got the real Lajani from the actual main set today too. It was actually very, very late last night. That they spoiled this card. This is a Johnny Unyielding. And you know, the first thing we got was the Portuguese um, for this card. And it was like, it translated to a Johnny Unshakable. And I was going to make a Kimmy Schmidt joke. But now I can't, you know, Unshakable and all that. This feline is strong as hell. All that stuff. 
Um, but that <laughs> didn't pan out because that's not the actual translation of the card. Um, the other thing I'm mad about, by the way, is that I've got my top five cards we want in Aether Revolt. I've got that video, like, ready to go. And Tezzeret and Ajani are both in that video. And so, like, the day that I'm going to release that video, Wizards shows us these. That's kind of a pain in the butt. But I'm still going to put that video out because my Ajani and my Tezzeret are better. Um, <laughs> so stay on the lookout for that. Um, this Ajani, by the way, I said this feline is strong as hell. That's just if you look at the art. Like, obviously, Ajani is buffed up. Like, he's huge now. He's, like, Garrick size now. I'm um, not really sure how that happened. And he's wearing Elspeth's cloak, which is kind of sad, because she's dead, and he really likes her. But, in any case, lore aside, um, just the actual function of the card, I'm going to go with the vast majority of the community on this and say that I am not a fan. I am really not. I might as well read this card to you. It's six mana. That's four, a green, and a white, just like the Planeswalker pack one, for a four loyalty Planeswalker with plus two. Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Negative two, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. That's swords to plowshares. Number of uh, negative nine, put five plus one plus one counters on each creature you control and five loyalty counters on each other planeswalker you control. <clears throat> Go. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, his first couple of abilities are not bad. Obviously, you know, plus two, ticking him up to six when he comes out into play is pretty good honestly and you get some card advantage off of it but it's not the amazing thing everyone's saying it a lot of people even the people that hate on the card are saying that his plus two is insane you know great one of the best card advantage things that's ever been on a planeswalker it has the potential to be yeah but you can also whiff on this in some decks you want to play this in creature heavy decks obviously but a lot of people are saying play this in control if you play it in a dedicated control deck you're gonna whiff on his plus two like a lot and note that it's not permanent everyone thinks this is permanent it's non-land so if you get a land, you got to throw it away. you got to put it back on the bottom of your library. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that in a permanent heavy mid-range deck, maybe Bant, you know, that, that could be a possibility. And there's other stuff, Naya as well, obviously. Um, this could be real, but six mana, man. I mean, if we're paying six mana for a Planeswalker in this standard right now, you know, I like Grim Nemesis. And a lot of people are saying this is just as good or better than Grim Nemesis, but this can't just win the game by plus oneing over and over like Soren can, you know. And with Chandra, um, Flamecaller, she's just leagues ahead of this card, as far as I can tell. So, you know, I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan. I do think his plus one or plus two is very good in a lot of situations. You know, you can often draw two cards off of that if you build the deck correctly. So there's that, um, and his negative two is better than some people want to give it credit for. Source to Plowshares is a very important piece of legacy removal, and having him on this card is pretty nice. You know, you just play him, go ahead and negative two him, get rid of the biggest thing on their side of the board. Sure, they gain life, but we don't, honestly, we don't care. Um, or at least control decks don't, don't usually care. But again, I don't think we're playing this in a control deck unless we want to whiff on the plus two over and over. Um, his ultimate is pretty nice, but it requires you to have a bunch of other stuff on the battlefield. But, you know, even if you only have like a Sylvan Advocate and a Tireless Tracker out, you're still getting two enormous creatures. So that's cool. If you have one other Planeswalker out, then you've basically got an ultimate on that Planeswalker. Um, which, you know, I will say you could read the ultimate like that, like ultimate all of your other Planeswalkers. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. So this obviously goes in Super Friends. You know, he's on color in some ways, at least with um, Deploy the Gatewatch, Recall the Gatewatch. So those, you know, those things make it seem good, but is Super Friends going to be real? I'm just not, I hope so. You know, it depends on what else we see in this set. But this, this card goes in very specific decks, and the decks that it wants to go in, like the control decks that everyone wants to put it in, don't really want it because they don't want to whiff on the plus two. I'm just, I'm not really sure. This doesn't look like we can just jam it into anything that exists currently, you know, uh, like the aggro decks that want to play this don't want to play a six mana Planeswalker, you know, so I'm just a little off on it. Maybe we'll see some other stuff in Aether Revolt that makes this card truly playable. Um, and I will say the card's like playable in EDH, but you can say that about a lot of things. <laughs> you know, I'm just not really sure about the standard viability of this, which is dumb. Dumb, because I love a Johnny, because you guys know I'm the cat guy. <laughs> you know, I love cats. Um, Johnny's one of my favorite Planeswalkers, and I really wanted them to do a Johnny Justice. And for all I know, they did. For all I know, there's a bunch of stuff in Aether Revolt that perfectly facilitates this or for, facilitates the Super Friends deck. Um, but right now, just in a vacuum, I'm not seeing this in the current standard at all, you know. Um, but, so there's that. I, I just I want to be more excited about it, 
but I'm not. Let me know why I'm wrong in the comments. But for my money, the best card that we saw all day is the most recently um, spoiled card. As a matter of fact, I was getting ready to make this video. I was writing some stuff out, and I checked the uh, spoiler one more time, and this card had just gotten put up. So this is pretty fresh right here. This is Heart of Kieran. This is two mana. It's two generic mana for a vehicle. It's a legendary vehicle. It's a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigilance with Crew 3, and you may remove a loyalty counter from a Planeswalker walker you control rather than pay Heart of Kiran's crew cost. So first of all, let me just say that maybe this, that, that very last ability on the card, is proof that we'll see some things for Super Friends in this set. You know, maybe we'll see some Planeswalker-related things. You know, that, that'd be cool. But now we've gotten out of the way, holy crap! Jeebus, jeep, what? Like, the card is crazy. We thought Smuggler's Copter was good. This is cr ridiculous. Like, sure, you have to, you know, crew three. Crew three and it's legendary. There are definitely some downsides to the card. Whatever. Like, it's ridiculous. It's a two mana, four, four flyer with another ability, by the way. Um, and sure, you know, again, crew three, whatever. Toolcraft Exemplar. First turn Exemplar, third turn Exemplar. Whichever one can crew this super easily. I mean, Dipala cruise it easily, you know, and you get to draw the cards off Dipala too. Like, it's just, what is this? Like, what is this? We thought that Smuggler's Copter was so crazy. And it turns out, like, the hate for Smuggler's Copter is just another vehicle, <laughs> right? Because this completely eats Smuggler's Copter alive. It's going to make those vehicles decks better. It's going to go in, like, every mid-range deck, you know. Oh, Tyler's Tracker, third turn. Crew this thing. Swing in for four. Like, what? It's so dumb. The card is dumb. Like, this is, I'm freaking out over this because we, again, we all thought Smuggler's Copter was the end-all, be-all for vehicles. And it might honestly be slightly better just because of its lower crew cost and the fact that it loots. That's, that, the fact that it loots is one of the best things about the card. This doesn't do that, but it's got two different crew options. It's one power and toughness bigger than Smuggler's Copter at the same mana cost, and it's got two crazy abilities. So, like... Like, this is big. This is this is big and maybe a chase rare from the set, even though we haven't seen a whole lot of the set. Right? This is like six cards from the set. Even though we haven't seen much, it's pretty obvious that this card is very, very high in power level. So, don't even know what to say about it, honestly, other than like, wow. <laughs> this looks not completely broken or anything, but it does look like it'll make those vehicles decks that much better, and it may warp the format even farther than what Looter Scooter has done. So, whew, wow. Whew. That last card, I can't, this card is so serious. Like, we get three Planeswalkers and an, a card that's not a Planeswalker, and the card that's not the Planeswalker is the one that I am easily the most excited about. Like, I'm getting the Vipers about that card. The thing is ridiculous. So, let me know how you feel about that junk. That thing is... Oh, I'm sure that that's making a lot of people really, really mad at how good it is. I'm sure that it is. But I like good cards, so there's that. Um, but let me know how you feel about all these down there in the side... In the um, I was going to say in the sideboard. I just start calling the comment section the sideboard, because that makes some sense. But let me know how you feel in the comment section about all these. Am I wrong on a Johnny? You know, the, the actual main set version of a Johnny. Um, am I wrong about him? Am I am I too freaking out about Heart of Kiran? Because I am I am obviously freaking out, having palpitations <laughs> about that thing. Um, it also confirms that there will be vehicles in Aether Revolt. A lot of people weren't totally sure. Yes, there will be. This is confirmation. So there's that. Um, but anyway, that's that's I'm tapped out. That's all I've got for this one. But I'm also going to be very soon here. Um, hopefully in the same day. But you might have to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to be putting out the top five cards we want in Aether Revolt. And I don't care. I don't care. They've already put out a Johnny and Tezzeret. I'm going to show you my versions of them. Because I'm a little I'm a little upset about these versions of these cards. And I'm going to show you my better versions. And also, you know, other cards that are could could be in the set that I, that I at least want. So stay tuned for that. And let me know how wrong or right I am in the comments section on this video. And like the video if you enjoyed the content. Sub if you're new. Do all that YouTube stuff. Check out the SoundCloud. Whatever. Look at all our deck techs, you know, all the stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm Deb from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.